What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. You thought this was going to be a game week without any postponements and any double game weeks. Well, I've got something to tell you. Watford and Burnley are now doubling in game week 23. So I had the whole video prepared and then bam, this gets announced. So we're going to talk through that and then go through a bunch of the rest of the questions and stuff that you've come up with. We're going to cover as much as we can for what's been announced and what's going to be announced as well. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Just before we get into it, I want to talk about pit guru pretty cool app with a big prize so happy to say that i have partnered with pit guru for this video if you haven't checked them out it's a sports prediction app available for people in the uk who are 18 and over and there's different sports you can go for so i've got football selected here it could be golf as well and obviously if you go back to all that i'll show you everything that's on offer so the game we're going to concentrate on today is ultimate guru 2022 so if i click into this right this game is based on 12 of the year's biggest sporting events right so there's a lot of football stuff in there but there's other sports like rugby golf and things like that as well including snooker as well and basically there's a million pounds up for grabs a million pound jackpot if you can guess the winner or predict the winner from each of these 12 sporting events now if you don't get them all right that's not the end of the world there's twenty five thousand pound guaranteed as well so you can see the payouts here and there's basically a scoring system right so if you get like the winner you get a certain amount of points if you get a runner-up you get a certain amount of points so even if you don't get all 12 right they're still up for uh, up to 20 25 grand to win including ten thousand pounds for first place but obviously the million pound jackpot is what we want now again it's open to uk residents 18 or over links to the full terms and conditions are in the description below as is the links to begambleaware.org as well so once you've downloaded the app you're into ultimate guru 2022 just click on enter and you can start making your picks right there as to who you think are going to win all these events so i'm not going to go through every single one but just to show you how easy it is right premier league for example i think we all know at this point man city have probably won the league so I'm going to put them down uh, for Premier League winners. I'm also going to put them down for Champions League winners because I think they, they are getting closer and closer. Obviously, Champions League final last year. Could this be the year where they finally go on and win it? So I'm going to put them in for there. Um, for example, you've got on here Wimbledon's men as well. I'm going to put Djokovic as long as he's allowed in the country, right? I'm sure he's got a good chance of winning there. FIFA World Cup, of course, is going to be England and so on and so on. So you can go and get it downloaded now. Link in the description below. As long as you're 18 and over from the UK, you can get it downloaded, give it a go, million pounds up for grabs, go and check it out. All right, so the way we're going to do this is obviously talk about what's actually been announced, then we'll talk about what could happen as well. Um, FPL did write an article that said something like, these are the only games, that you know, the only teams that are doubling in game week 23. So we're going to assume that no other fixtures will get put into this, but it is something to maybe consider, but we'll come on to that in a minute. So what's been announced, Watford versus Norwich at home and Burnley away. So Watford will double and so will Burnley again. Against Arsenal away and Watford at home. Now, it's maybe not the two most exciting teams, but it does straight away put Watford down as potential captaincy options this week. I will definitely be captaining a Watford player this week. In fact, I might even have three in my team. Um, so Norwich at home and Burnley away is a pretty good double. If we just quickly switch to the long-term fixtures, so West Ham... Brighton, Villa, and, and Man United. Three of them are away games as well. It's not that easy. So long term, you don't necessarily want to be stuck with these players in your team, but... Considering we're not going for any Watford midfielders, we're not going for any Watford defenders either, you've only got a very cheap goalkeeper, which could be your second goalkeeper, or you've got someone like King or Dennis, or maybe even João Pedro, which I'll come on to in a minute, who could also be options as well. But obviously they're cheap, and, and maybe if we're switching to like, I don't know, if people are sticking to four at the back, or going to three, five, two, then they're potentially just bench options going forward anyway. So it's maybe not that much of an issue, right? So I, I don't think spending transfers on Watford players is necessarily that bad but you don't necessarily need a triple up right with Burnley players if I had them I'd be tempted to play them if you got Pope or Loughton or someone like that Arsenal away Watford at home is not that bad um, although to be honest if you gave me 10 quid and asked me to bet I'd probably bet on no clean sheets for Burnley but who knows who knows what might happen I don't think I'd be using transfers to bring them in I don't think their players really fit in with our strategies kind of long term so if we concentrate on the Watford players Foster, if you've got him, I think you play him. Like I'm, this is my team right now. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later on as well. But Foster against Norwich at home, Burnley away. I mean, it seems okay. Like Watford defence is not good, but hopefully, if, even if there's no clean sheets, there's some save points there. And if he does get one clean sheet. And then you've got an extra fixture as well with some save points. So that could be a big score. I'm definitely going to do it over playing De Gea. I know he was out injured. 
Um, but as soon as he was fit, I think he he wasn't fit until this Newcastle game. He came in and played the 90 minutes. So I'm going to hope that it's his position back now. So I think if you've got Foster, you play him, right? And if you've got Backman, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't play Backman. I think I'd play my other keeper. Um, in terms of players to look at, obviously it's King versus Dennis versus João Pedro. Now, João Pedro has been getting more and more minutes. And not necessarily from a FPL point of view, but from a footballing point of view, João Pedro was kind of the one that people were marking as the, the forward to get from Watford early on, once he was back from injury. The problem was... He was injured for a long time, but his minutes have been increasing. I think Ranieri's been praising him as well. So he had um, two 90 minutes against Chelsea and Man City, and then he went back to kind of just a few, not 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 really cameos, but, you know, 30, 45, 45 minutes. And then another 90 minutes against Newcastle where he scored. I think he also played in the Cup as well, uh, the FA Cup. So he has been building his minutes up. Whether or not you go, I don't think you, unless you really want to take a punt, I don't think you go for João Pedro as your captain. But maybe if you were bringing in a second Watford striker alongside whoever you own, right? So if you own King or if you own Dennis, then maybe you could go for João Pedro as a bit of a differential. But what we know from the season so far is King and Dennis have started both, game, both games. And even against Newcastle when João Pedro started, all three of them started as well. So it's going to be tricky to know. The swings for points could be huge, right? You could go for Dennis captain, and that could be like 15, 20 points more than the other two. It could be the opposite if you go for João Pedro. It's tricky to know exactly who to go for. I don't really want to get into a massive King versus Dennis discussion. I think it's been done to death. If you want Dennis, if you think he looks better on the eye, go for him. I've got Josh King, so he's going to be my captain. I'm okay with that. I know he got a two-pointer last week. It was frustrating, but he's the one I'm going to go for. Penalties will be interesting. Jao Pedro could take penalties instead of King, right? Well, I think he took penalties in, the, uh, in sometimes in the championship last year. So it's not even a dead cert that King's going to be on penalties, right? So the whole thing's a little bit of a mess. But I think you captain whoever you own right now, King or Dennis. If you're going to bring one in, look, King still has the stats. Dennis has got the eye test, apparently, from lots of people. You could go for him or Jao Pedro if you want a bit of a differential. Uh, and I do think you captain one of these players. I would definitely captain them over a... Um, single game week player like I know there's lots of options and captaincy to be fair was looking not difficult this week but there was a lot of options you could go Foden Cancelo Trent in my team for example maybe even Jota maybe even Ronaldo but I think you definitely captain a game week 23 player and then transfers in like I've said Dennis King Pe uh, João Pedro maybe Foster but I don't think I'd use a transfer and I'd just play him if I had him and I wouldn't transfer in any Burnley players. So there is a double game week. It's maybe not that exciting because it is Watford and Burnley. But still, we love a double. I'm going to captain one. I'm going to play Foster. And then it's just fingers crossed. Now, I want to cover the Aston Villa double game week, right? Which hasn't been announced at all. But there was a lot of speculation. We've talked about it so much that I want to kind of cover, like, what we know now. We don't really know anything more. But the one thing we do know is they now can't play Burnley in game week 23. Because obviously Burnley are playing Watford. So the only possible double game week in 23 now is Everton away and leads away uh, which could still get announced but it's unlikely that's going to happen now you'd think they would have announced it at the same time as Watford and Burnley the only thing I would say is make sure you've got multiple transfer plans ready because for example for me I don't know if I'm going to bring in a second Watford striker but if Watkins was going to double in game week 23 then I probably would downgrade Ronaldo to Watkins to have an extra double game weeker this week with good fixtures going forward and who allows me to get Salah in for well not free but it gives me enough money to get Salah in the week after so my transfer plans would change and maybe even take another hit to get Rafinha because then he'd have Newcastle and Villa so we suddenly go from I potentially might roll the transfer this week to potentially taking a minus four or even a minus eight. So just have your plans ready. I don't think this double is going to be announced for game week 23 now, but you never know. The other thing that could potentially happen is it gets announced after the deadline. And if that happens, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that FPL would pull the game week 24 deadline forward. Now, this is just kind of a fun, interesting thing. But if that happens... The uh, Villa versus Leeds double for both teams would basically be them playing each other twice because the game in 24 is Villa versus Leeds. So the double would be Villa versus Leeds, then Villa versus Leeds. Obviously, one would play away, then the other one would play away. Um, and also, there's a chance due to the time and matches that game week 24 could start before 23 is finished. So there's a whole weird scenario where that can happen. But right now, we just we just don't think it's going to be in game week 23. The earliest it now looks it could be announced for is game week 24. So I think the players you're looking at 
obviously for Leeds, it's pretty much just Rafinha because Bamford's not been back. I wouldn't trust him to have the minutes in a double, whether it was in 23 or 24. Obviously, if it's announced for 24, we'll talk about it next week. And then the Villa players, I mean, you've got Luca Dean or Matty Cash. We're going to talk about that later. They're probably your defensive options. Ramsey, if you need a cheap midfielder. Coutinho, if you're not worried about his minutes, which again, uh, might come on to you later. But I think um, I saw Adam Hopcroft. If you don't follow him on uh, Twitter, go and follow him. Really good FPL player, also a Villa fan. I think he said that Coutinho hasn't played 90 minutes for a year and a half. So I do worry about his minutes potential. And up front, I think it's got to be Watkins because I... I know we don't know 100%, but I just think Watkins is more nailed than Ings. I do think we're going to see Ings miss a few games. Like not, He might come off the bench, but I think he's going to not start a few games. So if you're thinking about which striker to go for, I think it's got to be Watkins. But I wanted to cover this because if the Villa double gets announced for 23 later, I'm probably not going to have enough time to make another video. So I just wanted to quickly cover it. But chances are it doesn't get announced now. It might not even go into game week 24. It could just be later on in the season. So I'm going to go through some of your questions. I've got to be honest, I'm going to cut some of them out that I was going to answer because I just know they're not relevant anymore because of the double game we can announce. All right, like captaincy, like Ings versus Watkins, for example, to bring in this week, right? It's probably not going to happen now there's a double game week, right? Unless Villa gets announced, but I've just covered that anyway. One of the questions that came in was whether or not a wild card be, could be used now. So is a wild card a genuine option if the squad needs multiple changes? Now, I'm into, without the Villa double, I probably don't, need a wild card this week and i'd say most people don't right suddenly uh the the kind of needs for this week shift so instead of needing a villa player or multiple players you now need watford players and a lot of people have already got their captaincy sorted a lot of people might already have foster on the bench for example and therefore you don't need to make too many other transfers so the rest of your team can just stay as is and you can reassess for next week so i would assume that a wild card now isn't needed like even if i tried to put like a draft together i'm not really sure how much different to this it would look like i'd probably put in de bruyne and have him as a placeholder for Salah. I'd maybe put in Luca Dean anyway instead of Alonso, for example, to have him in place for Villa's good fixtures either way. I'd probably have to shift Ronaldo down to be able to afford that Salah spot, so I'd probably put in Watkins. And obviously, I wouldn't have Trossard and Gray. I'd have Rafinha and someone else. So already, that's quite a few um, changes, right? I haven't thought about goalkeeper. Maybe I swapped the hair, but obviously, I'm not going to swap King. Maybe I put in... Dennis, just because it's a wild card, right? Potentially, and then move on to Watkins next week. Um, Gray and Gray and uh, Trossard would probably go to. I'm just really quickly putting a draft together in my head. De Bruyne and uh, Rafinha for sure, because I, I do miss Rafinha. I do want him back in. And obviously, um, Alonso would go to Luca Dean, and I'd swap Dawson and Livermento. So straight away, that is Dennis, Rafinha, De Bruyne, obviously with an idea of switching to Salah. Although if I'm switching to Salah, that's already one transfer. So if I also want to switch Dennis to Watkins, I'm already booking in two transfers, right? So they've got to be careful about that. But that's Dennis, uh, De Bruyne, Rafinha, and then three defensive transfers. That's six swaps. To me, that is kind of enough to use a wild card. The problem is we just don't know what's going to happen later on in the season. Now, for those of us with two free hits, I think the wild card is... Um, it's not necessarily a better option early on in the season because no one can really know that right now, but it is more viable, right? People put the wild card on such a pedestal that it has to be used at the exact right precise moment and it can make a big difference to our teams. Um, but if you use it now and then double game weeks get announced later on, you'll do exactly what you're doing now. You'll start planning for it. You'll start reacting. You'll start making moves based on them. I don't know if a wild card is going to massively just make the rest of the season like, and I'm talking about using it after game week 30, just going to make the end of the season super easy because it probably won't. So you could use it now and have two free hits because one could be used for the big blank and the other one could be used for a big double game week or something like that or where you get kind of screwed over by fixtures. And then you'd have to set up the bench boost for now as well, right? So you'd have to look at using the bench boost in like game week 24, 25, or 26. Because you don't want a wild card and then not use the bench boost sooner rather than later. Because then it gets really tricky to use. And then you start having to use transfers for your bench. And it's not great to do. So when I wild carded early last year, I set up the bench boost where I had like one or two double game week players. And then two single game week players, I think. And that was fine. I'm, I'm happy to do that. I don't think you, saving the wild card for a big double, uh, sorry, for a big bench boost later on is the be all and end all of getting a good rank this season. But ultimately, 
I think without the Villa rearrangement, bearing in mind a lot of people, if, especially if you're in a similar situation to me, just don't own Villa players, and I don't even have any Leeds players either. Like, if that game would be rearranged, then suddenly there's a lot more transfers I need to make. And right now, again, going back to this team, yes, there's six moves that I would make, but Livermento Dawson aren't going to play anyway. I don't mind playing Alonso against Spurs. It's not ideal, but I can do it. And I don't necessarily need Rafinha now that there's a double game week for Watford. I could almost just roll, right? And if I wanted Rafinha, I could still do Gray to Rafinha and bench Trossard. So uh, for me, for, I, I know everyone's teams are different, but for me, I just don't see why a wild card is needed right now. It might be needed soon, but now I don't think it is. So it depends how many changes, and it depends how big those changes are. But if you can get to a good enough team without them, it probably is worth saving if you can. But I wouldn't completely write off. If you want to use it now, go for it. But I'd really want two free hits in hand. Okay, so someone did ask me about um, forwards before the double game it was announced. Now, it, the, the answer is still pretty relevant, to be honest. Who are the best forwards for the long term, starting from game week 23? Now, the biggest difference is now, of course, for game week 23 specifically, King Dennis Jao Pedro, a.k.a. a Watford forward, are good options i already had king on the list i still think because of their price because they're pretty much nailed because they're playing 80 to 90 minutes most games um they are good for squad structure you don't have to play them every week right they're, they're cheap enough to bench so i still think they're a good option going forward and obviously they are good for game week 23 but they're probably not the ones you necessarily want to play every single week after game week 23 as i already shown the fixtures aren't great so then you're really looking at kind of kane ronaldo antonio watkins calvert lewin as the other kind of five main options. There's not too many forwards outside of this list that I'd really be considering right now. Kane versus Ronaldo is really tricky, right? I said last week that I thought that Kane was better for game week 23. Uh, sorry, for game week 22, the double, which never happened in the end. And that Ronaldo was maybe better going forward because West Ham's probably a bit easier than Chelsea. And then Burnley, Southampton, Leeds, Watford are pretty good fixtures. Whereas for Kane, he's got like some okay fixtures and then some really like not okay fixtures. So Chelsea away is tough. Southampton at home is okay for sure. Kane could get a result there, a, a good score there. Wolves at home, yeah, it's okay. And then Man City away is pretty tough. So two of the next four fixtures are, are like two of the hardest games you might get. Now Chelsea... Playing Chelsea right now is maybe not quite the same as playing Chelsea early on in the season with Chilwell, James, Kante, Kovacic just all playing really well and, and really tight defence. Like Chelsea have looked a little bit worse recently, but this isn't that good of a fixture run. But I do think, on the other hand, that Conte has got Spurs and Kane playing better than Ranić has got Man United and Ronaldo playing, right? So it's a tricky one. If I had to have one, it would be Ronaldo. But if it blocks you having either of those two from getting Salah, I think they have to go. So for my own team, for example, if I just bring that back up, I've got Antonio, and I think he's okay to keep, right? He's not a worry this week against Man United. Then it's Watford, Leicester, Newcastle. Those three defences, not good. I'm more than happy to keep Antonio. I've got King. I'm going to hold on to him. And then at some point, I'm going to sell Ronaldo to get Salah back. It could be soon. And if I'm looking at this list, I'm tempted by Calvert-Lewin because the fixtures are good. New manager bounce, possibly. But I think Watkins could be the one outside of that. So if I was building a wildcard draft right now, I'd maybe fit in one of Kane or Ronaldo with Salah or with the potential to buy Salah back when he's available. But otherwise, I think I'd be going cheap. I think I'd be going Antonio, Watford uh, attacker, and then um, one of Calvert-Lewin or Watkins. And I think that would be my front line going forward. All right, so I know I've kind of already talked about my team as we've been going through the video, but I just wanted to give you some thoughts on it. Obviously, did team selection yesterday, but now things have changed with the double game week being announced. There was a couple of other questions, right? So just really quickly, double city attack versus double city defense. I think if I was going for one, I'd go for double defense right now. Like I've just talked about a bunch of forwards. None of them were Jesus. Uh, and then if I think about my midfield, I want to build towards like Salah, Rafinha, Jota, Foden, maybe Coutinho. There's just not really a spot for a second man city midfielder so i probably wouldn't go there either so i think foden plus cancelo is it for me right now maybe diaz or laporte as well at some point for alonso if i don't want to go for luca dean a lot of that will depend on whether villa get a double in 24 which i don't know how likely that is now to be honest the other question was about fernandez if he keeps playing well do we keep him possibly but again it depends what it blocks if fernandez blocks you from getting salah back back no you don't keep him right this is my team now my original transfer plan was to go from Gray to Rafinha and bench Trosser. Now, I might still do that, to be honest. Rafinha's got a really good game against Newcastle. I don't want to completely ignore the single game week players. Um, and if I go for... 
I, like I could, if I come onto the transfer screen, I could go for Ronaldo to a different Watford player potentially right so I, I could take a punt on Jao Pedro I'd probably just get Dennis to be honest but I could take a punt on Jao Pedro that would give me 11.1 million in the bank which is ridiculous right and I could also then either just play Trossard or just do Gray to Rafinha for a hit and just play both right so do the transfer I was going to do anyway uh, and then bring in an extra Watford player but then moving forward let's say Gray has gone to Rafinha uh, and I, I could do this. Then next week, I got, I got 10 million in the bank for game week 24. And let's say Salah's back. Then bam, Trossard comes straight back out. And I bring in Salah. Now, my main worry is how likely is the double game week for Villa in game week 24? And the honest answer is I don't know. But if that happens, suddenly do I want Salah back? No, I probably want Watkins. In which case, I've just bought in another Watford player just for this week. Just to then transfer them out next week. I'm just not sure if that's worth it. Um, and, and, and obviously with this, I've also then got to play... I'm not going to go to like a 4-5-1 anytime soon, I don't think. I've then got to play both my Watford... Oh, sorry, I've got to play one of my Watford players um, kind of most weeks. And after this, they've got like West Ham, Brighton, Villa, Man United. So I don't really want to do that. So I would take a hit this week to get Rafinha and Jao Pedro... Or Dennis, right? And then next week I'd want Salah back if there's no double. But I'd also want to change one of these Watford players. So I don't... I, I hate I hate avoiding doubles, right? I really... I mean, I've got two, right? I've got, I've got two Watford players. So it's not like I'm completely avoiding it. But I really like to attack them. But I just don't think it's worth, for my team, bringing in that sec, second Watford player. Because it's just going to affect my transfers long term. So if I just bring in Rafinha this week... That, that means next week, if I do need to get Salah in, I can just do the Ronaldo swap to whichever forward I want, whichever one looks good. Maybe Watkins if he's got a double, maybe Calvert-Lewin if not. Who knows, right? I don't know who it would be, but I could get rid of Ronaldo. And if Salah's not back, for whatever reason, then Ronaldo's got Burnley, I can just keep him. So it's not really the end of the world. So I think I might just stick to my original plan and not bring in a double game week player, which goes against everything I believe in for FPL, and just do great to Rafinha and Brent Trossard. My captain will definitely be king. The only way that would change is if, is if I did bring in Dennis or Jao Pedro, then I might captain them instead. But right now it's on Josh King. I hope he keeps penalties and happy days. And I'm going to play Foster. And that is probably it for my team. So I could roll. I could just not get in Rafinha and see what happens next week. But I think that's probably what I'll do. Great to Rafinha, Captain King, play Foster, job done. So there we go. Hopefully that was helpful. It was a bit like a game week preview slash double game week announcement video slash final thoughts video all mashed up. Um, and yeah, obviously a lot of it's just around Watford and Burnley, but also we need to talk about going forward, wild cards, forwards and things like that. So hopefully it was helpful. If it was, please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Don't forget to check out Pit Guru. There is a link in the description below to get it downloaded. Make sure you uh, enter the Ultimate Guru 2022 uh, game before the deadline as well. Uh, obviously a million quid up for grabs ain't bad if you're 18 or over from the uk and obviously make sure to check out the b gamble aware links in the description below i'll leave it there i'll see you later for what will probably be a hectic um deadline stream probably be around half four ish hopefully uh, but yeah i'll leave it there give it a like hit subscribe i'll see you soon